Hi there. In this video, does your band need a contract slash MOU? The short answer is no. The long answer is maybe. There are certainly some benefits to having one. When I was younger, I played in several working bands. I'll put up a few embarrassing pictures during the course of this episode. I can tell you that we didn't have a contract or MOU when I was playing in these bands, though in one band I'm sure we had a contract with our agent. What I'm talking about in this video is a contract or MOU between the band members. Before we get too deeply into this video episode, I have a disclaimer. This is not legal advice. I don't want you to sue me. This is my opinion as a musician with experience, sharing it with other musicians. If you decide to go this route, you should probably consult an attorney. That's up to you. So what is a contract? A contract is an agreement that can be used to bind the parties of the agreement to the terms of the agreement. Similarly, a memorandum of understanding, MOU, is an agreement between the parties to abide by the terms of the MOU. Generally, an MOU has language of intent that is softer than a contract. For example, where a contract might say, all band members will show up on time for a practice session, an MOU might say, all band members should show up on time for a practice session. What experience taught me is that an MOU is a good idea, and I highly recommend it. Here's what it can do for you. It can set goals and expectations of the band members. For example, the band members can define the overall goal of the band, which might be, we want to learn four sets of 10 pop songs so that we can play at local venues for a fee. Or, we want to write and rehearse 10 songs so we can go into the studio, record 10 songs, and then pitch the band to a record label. It can determine how decisions are made, usually by a vote, who gets to vote, and how many votes it takes for the motion to pass or fail. It can state how the band selects a leader or spokesperson for the band, and this is certainly something every band should consider. It can stipulate that the band members should show up on time for practice sessions as notified by the leader, that band members should show up for gigs on time, that band members will help roadie all the gear in and out of the venue, that band members will give reasonable notice before leaving the band so the band can find a replacement. Perhaps this all sounds like common sense. Of course everyone is going to roadie the gear and do the things I've just said, but it doesn't always work out that way. If you've been in a band any length of time, you may know what I mean. If you haven't been in a band before, you'll be prepared. Put it in the agreement and remind members when you need to do so. It can set parameters related to business administration and financial aspects of the band. This is going to depend on how serious you are about your band and your intended goals. For example, it can stipulate how, where, when band members are paid. Do band members get paid equally or do they get a portion of a cut? Portions of a cut are important for crew, like the person running the soundboard or the person running the lights and pyrotechnics. If you're not sure what that is and how it would work, I have another video about managing a band that covers some of these aspects. It can set aside some portion of the income for improvements, like a more powerful PA so the band can play larger venues or set aside money for studio time if the goal is to get songs recorded. It can state who, how, and when you make decisions. For example, that the band meets once a month to make decisions and discuss the progress of the band. To decide when the leader of the band should be changed, who gets to vote, and how many votes it takes to make the change. Is it a simple majority or all the voting members? To decide how, why, and when someone gets fired from the band, who gets to vote and how many votes it takes to make the change. Once again, a simple majority or all the voting members. This is a touchy subject, but if you're in a serious working band, this is going to be an issue sooner or later. Let's say for months, Jimmy has never showed up on time for a practice session. 
He's often late to gigs, and you notice that some venues are not hiring you back because you start late due to Jimmy being late. At the monthly meetings and at other times, Jimmy has been confronted, but he just blows it off. The nice thing about an MOU is that it's signed by all the band members, so Jimmy already knows what's expected of him. For those that are loyal to Jimmy, it makes it easier on their conscience to let Jimmy go. It can also be used to determine if the leader of the band gets extra pay. This is often overlooked. Some leaders don't do that much. Others communicate with the agent, pick up the checks or cash, and distribute it to the other members. If the band doesn't have an agent, the leader is often the person who secures gigs and pays expenses. This takes time and effort, and if you don't want a leader resenting the duties, pay them at least something as a token of appreciation. It often doesn't have to be that much. What won't an MOU or a contract do for you? Generally, it won't bind members under the age of 18. It won't force members to play, and you should never try to make that happen. The MOU won't by its existence make everyone compliant or get along, but it doesn't hurt and it often helps. One thing that you should avoid is waving the agreement in front of a member's face every time they step out of line. Simply remind them that they signed the agreement. If you're in a working band and their actions are costing you gigs slash income, you have to decide if you might be better off without them. Maybe Jimmy is the best guitar player in town, but if he only shows up half the time, what good is he to you? What I've just mentioned here are examples of things that you can put into an MOU. Obviously, there are many others. Bands are like relationships. They start out in the spring of hopefulness with everyone excited and no one aware of anyone's quirks or shortcomings. It continues on to the summer of love with paychecks and adoring crowds. By the fall, a few cracks are starting to appear with conflicting personalities, and by winter, everything is cold. This is not to say this happens over a single year. These are just the elements of the life cycle of a band, and it can happen over decades. We all know of famous bands that have imploded, quietly changed members over the years, or publicly and spectacularly exploded. Almost every band I was in had a Jimmy, a prima donna, at least one band member in a toxic relationship with another band member or someone on the outside, and a couple of band members that just rolled with the punches. I have great memories of the working bands in which I played. It was decades ago, and I'm still friends with a few members. In closing, I understand that for many musicians, the band is a place to hang out, jam, and have fun. If that is your goal, you don't need an MOU, and I'm just wondering why you watched the video to almost the end, but thanks for doing that. For others who may have aspirations of a career in music, whether at the local level or beyond, I highly recommend an MOU for your band. I can't say with certainty that an MOU would have changed anything regarding the bands I was in, but I do believe an MOU has value. Hopefully I haven't wasted your time. Take care, and I'll be back in another episode soon.